All right. Well, hello and welcome to our Fridays with Fiscal. Um, today we are going to be talking about account filters. So um, we'll get started here in a minute. Uh, my name is Amanda. I'm going to be uh, talking through everything today. But um, before we roll just right into the account filters, I have a couple of things to kick us off. Um, and the very first thing is what we're looking at right now. So this is our SSDT public wiki. But if you've been in here in the past, it looks a little bit different recently. And uh, that's because we switched it to the cloud. So um, basically what, what I you know check outside of kind of like some of the visual changes is this URL looks a little bit different than it used to. So you want to make sure that you're using uh, the wiki that is at um, this URL. Now, it's a good time to make sure to get all your uh, bookmarks updated. Like you can see, I have like my old one I still need to get rid of here. And then I have the new wiki that I'm switching over to. Um, so the old web page, like the old URL is still there for now. And that's why I wanted to like mention this and highlight this. But uh, keep in mind that any new updates that we're doing, we're only doing to the new wiki. So that's why it's really important to get yourself switched over and get your bookmarks switched over because um, while the old one is still there for reference, like it's not just disappearing right away, new things that we're putting out there, uh, you're only going to see on the new one. And um, I'm going to show you something I added today. <laughs> so uh, so we're going to be talking about the account filters, but I went ahead and um, I had, we um, had this, let's see, do you know when the old URL wiki will be removed? So uh, let me see, I have a note. So Catherine had sent out an email and um, let's see. So the the legacy wiki is considered read only. It'll remain available for a few months. So so a few months. Um, I don't have an approximate, or I don't have like a specific date or anything, but um, but around then. So yeah, I'd say as soon as possible, get everything switched over because you know we make updates all the time to uh, the general uh, pages, and then where we're going this morning is uh, I'm gonna scroll down here. And you'll notice like, you know, all of these different categories are look very much the same as the old, um, as the the legacy, I should stop saying old, I should say legacy wiki. <laughs> uh, but if I go to our meetings and trainings, and I'm going to go to this section, this is our ITC, um, our ITC training session, so it's specific for the ITC users. Um and this is where you would have registered uh, for today's session to get the Zoom link. And um, if we scroll down here, I cannot believe it's already October 20th. So we're scrolling for a bit here. But uh, right here, this column, the very first one is um, for like resources. And I linked the presentation. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I have like another tab with it here and I, I probably will start with it open. I'm not sure that I'm going to be going back and forth to the presentation in our session today. Um, just because, you know, I like to stay in the software a lot and kind of talk through and we'll look at it as we're doing it. But I will tell you, I know this pre this presentation goes through things um, in like the same order. Like it's the same as the outline that I'm going to be talking through. So if you want to pull this up, um, you can also like at the ITC, if um, this might be an interesting training topic that you may turn over, um, you know, and, and do for your districts, there is an option to download. And um, I have a lot more options because it's because I have like full access. But I know in viewing, when you click that, you should be able to download this to like PowerPoint. Um, if you, you know, want to save that yourself and then make changes um, to customize for your ITC. So it gives you somewhere to start, which is kind of nice. Um, okay. Mm. So, okay, let's make sure everyone's in here too, because we had some people joining still. I think we're good. All right. Let me get back to my main page on the wiki. Okay. 
And um, so let's talk. So we're going to talk about the account filters today. So I'm going to be hopping through a couple different pages, but let's get to our account filters page in the wiki, um, just in case there's anything we want to look at there. And I'm going to go to the USAS documentation. And um, we'll see in a bit that these are going to be under the utilities menu. So I'm going to open that utilities and then click to the account filters. And uh, so we'll have this open here. It gives us a nice example. And um, oh yeah, there is something that I'm gonna be looking at in here. So that's why I <laughs> wanted to open that, perfect. Okay, all right. So let's hop in here and um, I guess I'll, I'll at least use this first slide uh, to get us started. And um, basically, oh, you know what? And then I proceed past it on accident, okay. So what are account filters? And, you know, I'm sure you all have heard about these before. Um, they are used, they're very, very helpful, especially in redesign, um, but they basically have a couple different uses and they can be used to limit users to specific accounts for their affiliated building or program. I mean, this could be multiple uses, building or program are just examples, um, or they can be used to filter information on reports. And, you know, for those um, users that may have been familiar with Classic, the really cool part about these account filters to me is that it is built off of a Classic mechanic. So um, the, the old version of like account filters in Classic was used to limit users to the accounts that they can see and use. But this second bullet point was something that was like a new concept coming over into redesign. And so that's where I think, you know, just having this this training where we can kind of talk through these, whether you know, you know, whether you have how much experience you have with them or not, um, it's kind of good because I think it's just something to um it's still evolving, you know, the different ways that these can be used for the districts. Okay, and you know what, before we move on, so this is where I, I told you I'm gonna jump right back in. Let me get in the software here. And you know what, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna log in as my admin account yet. Um, let me make sure, because I wanna talk about those two bullet points. We're gonna actually look at an example of those. So. So um, what I'm going to do is the first bullet point is that it's going to impact, you know, what that user is seeing, um, the accounts that they have available uh, to them. So we're logging in as my Amanda account here. And my Amanda user is um, just a requisition only user. And they do have an account filter that is applied to their account to restrict um, which accounts they can see. So the first place that I'm going to look at this is in the core accounts. And here we go right away. So we'll we'll go back and look at this filter, this actual filter later. But just for the basics of like what this is doing is if you log into this grid with like your admin account, with your ITC account, um, or if I like a treasurer logs in and they're not restricted, they can see all of the accounts, the entire chart of accounts in here and go sort and filter through. They could see cash accounts, they could see revenue accounts. Now, this user is very specifically mapped to only see ex these expenditure accounts because they meet certain parameters. So expenditure, here's their accounts. And this is really nice because it can simplify things a lot for them. Um, you know, if you think about somebody who's just putting requisitions in, you know, they may have, they know these are my four accounts and I just got to know which one that I need to use for this item that I'm ordering today. So um, the other places can be helpful is in the reports. So let me go back here. Hmm. I knew I was, I knew something with this access was going to go off. Okay. Well, uh, that's odd. I'll have to check the access for this. Um, let's go. Let's go to the report manager and see what we have there. Okay, yeah. So 
uh we'll take a look uh we'll take a look at another example but if a user has access to reports like a budget summary um then it would only show those um it would only show the accounts that they have access to on an account based report and um you might be thinking well there's some reports in there like why don't we use those and here's a key is that the account filters will absolutely filter any account-based information. Um, as far as transactions, so requisitions, um, if they have access to look at like purchase orders, those could contain like multiple varieties of accounts and the different items and stuff. So account filters don't restrict users to specific transactions. Uh, for requisitions, there are other ways to do that. But uh, this would specifically be for like viewing account totals. Um, so yeah, so I'm so sorry about that. I, you know, we always run into something. <laughs> but let's log out. Let's go ahead and um, we'll get back to our admin account and I can show you an example. Oh, geez. All righty. Hmm. Let us in. Okay. All right. So um, here, let me give you an example. Uh, if you had, okay, well, actually, no, you know what? We're moving on um because this shows both <laughs> so the other part of this our bullet point two on here uh is that account filters can also use to be to um, filter information on reports so if i go to my budget summary in my admin account now this user uh, has access to run you know um reports for all accounts that exist in the software but um, what we're looking at with this is this filter option. And this is on a bunch of different reports. This is on template reports. This is on um, a lot of different variety. But for our example, we're using the budget summary. And you can use this drop down here to select uh, an account filter. And then when we uh, generate this, that open up see look at all my budget summaries in here <laughs> there we go okay so um when i go ahead and run this it's going to be filtered to just the accounts that are matching my filter. And so in this case, I happen to have the one picked that was our same four accounts. So we can see that um, these accounts here, see, these are the same as we were seeing that our uh, just like Amanda user could see. And um, basically, it's a way that like a higher level account could get a really easy view or report of that same subset of accounts that one user may be restricted to. And the practical uses for this are things like, you know, if you have, say like the high school secretary is only gonna put in requisitions that are related to the high school. Uh, somebody may be responsible for athletic purchases, um, you know, or it could be like a certain subject, like, you know, who makes like the science, um, you know, purchases and, and stuff like that. So. So, you know, there are all kinds of reasons that they would, you know, and different uh, groupings, you know, for which accounts that um, any one user may need to be restricted to. All righty. Okay. So we got our examples. Let's see, reports. Oh, you know, I have a note of this too, and I kind of mentioned it, but just to like point it out um, specifically, is that I really like this also um, with being able to just run a quick report um, is it's a really good way to test account filters. 
So, uh, like, if someone at the district or, you know, if you at the ITC are helping them configure a filter for a user, um, now, obviously, when, when we get in there, there's more than just expenditure accounts, right? But the budget summary gives us a view of specifically of expenditure accounts. Um, but say there's something they're trying to specifically make sure is included or make sure is excluded, uh, running a report and then putting that filter on the report can be like a really quick test without having to do logins or anything like that to uh, confirm what is and is not being included in any account filter. Um, okay. Okay, so let's actually look at it. Um, if we go to utilities and go to account filters, this is our grid. So this is our starting ground for this. And as you can see, I have a ton of uh, different filters in here. Now, um, this is like an anonymized database. So some of these are just randomly generated and named filters. Um, as you can see, you can name them whatever you'd like. Uh, and then some of these are ones that I've created throughout um, time. But the filter's name, uh, so we do have the ability to uh, kind of like um, filter our actual filters grid to, you know, search for different filter names. Um, that grant example was the one I was using for my report. So um, if you needed to like search for a specific filter to look at it or to edit it, uh, it is pretty easy to find in here. And then we also have uh, the filter to show like just active account filter. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention at this point is, so the more option on here, it is pretty simple. So filters and active, uh, the ID is kind of behind the scenes. So this is a very simple grid as far as what you are actually looking at um to to look these up but i have a i have a trick for that too that we'll get we'll take a look at in a little bit so okay so let's create one so we're going to use our create button here all right okay so now um here let me expand Hope I'm zoomed in enough for you all to see. If you need me to zoom in it here, wait, let me do like one more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, yeah, if you need me to zoom in any anymore or anything, just let me know in the chat. But I, I'm hoping we're good there. And um, all right. So the first thing we're gonna see on here is the filter's name and the active checkbox. So these are the things that we can see on that grid. The filter's name, again, it can be really whatever we want. So let's make this one. We'll go ahead and just, uh, I'm just giving that a random name that I know we can find um, later. And uh, the the things to keep in mind with the filter's name is the first place that we saw it already was um, when we were pulling from that drop down on the report. So any of the temp, I'm sorry, any of the canned reports that have the filter, like the budget summary that's up there, um, those have drop downs. So the user could open that drop down on the report and they could start typing it in or they could look through them and then pick the filter's name. Um, any of the template reports that are in the report manager, they would have to type it in manually. So it, it can be a good tip to keep these filter names somewhat simple because if you know, like if it ends up being, um, I don't know, kind of, something that's not easy to remember. If there is a situation where they're trying to enter it onto a template report, then that might cause them to look it up. And I know that, you know, some of the things we've talked about, like it could be like high school, you know, and then they, they could get, I could see a situation where they could get detailed where if it's like high school history, you know, and, and whatnot. So just keep that in mind um, when making these filter names. Um, I did also want to mention that, you know, in the um, olden days, <laughs> there was a time where the filter names, when they typed them in, were case sensitive. Like they had to do uh, capital A, lowercase, capital test. 
that's no longer true. So when they type in a filter name on a template, they do not have to nail the exact capitalization. They could type this all in lowercase and it would still be able to find this filter. Um, it's even smart enough, like if there are two that have the same letters, it'll go with the one that's closest to the capitalization entered first. So um, so really all that to say, that's not um, not really a concern anymore. So uh, I, but I just know if, you know, people may have used these in the past and that was something that they ran into <laughs> um, back when uh, that's something that we fixed along the way. All right, okay. And then the active checkbox. So obviously when you're creating a brand new filter, like we want this to be active, you can check and uncheck this um, pretty easily. But uh, what the basic idea of this is, so um, because so part of it's because we have those drop downs on the reports. So the first thing, if you uncheck this, uh, like and you probably wouldn't do this on a brand new filter you're creating, but just for the sake of talking about it, if you had a filter, maybe you edited and you unchecked this to make it inactive then um, it would no longer show in the drop down of like the report filter. Like when you go to select a filter for a report, it'll take it out of that uh, drop down list, which that can be really nice um, if they if you have a district that might have filters, uh, a lot of different filters in here. And um, again, this was this came over from a classic uh, feature. So they might have old filters in there that they don't want to use anymore. So if you make these inactive, that would limit what actually shows in like any report list for a filter to use. Um, the other thing it does is if someone tries to use this filter or if this filter is assigned to a user, then it's gonna return no results. So uh, say I do have this like typed into a template report and then I make it inactive. I, when I run that report, there will be no accounts that match. So um, that could also be a good troubleshooting tip to keep an eye out for, um, you know, is, is inactive account filters. But yeah, the main purpose of that is to make sure that those can be disabled and um, kind of uh, out of, you know, out of use if uh, they're, if they're just old filters they're wanting to clean up. And then it makes that grid easy to kind of filter as well. So, okay, let's leave this active though. And let's move on because this whole section down here is really where um, the detail comes in. And let's see, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, we're gonna add, we wanna add some rows here because this is where we're gonna define. Um, and I can just click, I'm just clicking this box at the bottom. I can also click the plus here to add more rows. And the the um what I want to mention is, you know, obviously we have multiple rows. As we start entering things in here, this first column is the order. The order for account filters is significant. So um it's going to basically go through each one of these rows, like the software. So like it's going to when it says, you know, what matches this account filter for it'll look at the first line first and say, you know, per this information does this account match what I'm being, you know, what it needs to be filtered to. And then it'll look at the second line and then, and so on down the list. So we'll talk about this once we get some information in here, but the important thing to remember based on that information is um, more detailed accounts want to be, uh, so the more detailed um, rows should be towards the top and less detailed rows should be towards the bottom. So uh, what that means, like if I'm giving access to a specific account, I want that towards the top, where if I'm giving, you know, if I just have maybe one of these boxes filled out, it'll be lower. Um, so yes, so uh, I have an example we're gonna type in here and we'll continue to talk about that, but uh, that's the basics of the order. And then, um, we do have the arrows where you can move these rows around, but let's get to entering information in here. And this is where I'm going to um, switch back to our PowerPoint for a minute, because our very first column here is the TI. 
And let me tell you, this one's really important. So this needs to be filled out. And what you put in this very first box for TI, it does have an impact on which of these other fields are going to be relevant. So let me get to, let me get to the right slide here. So if we look at this, okay, it indicates which level of accounts the filter row will apply to. Only fields relevant to that TI will be used in the filter row. So my options here, I have zero, zero is cash accounts. So that means it's going to look at the fund and the special cost center fields. Zero, two is expenditure accounts. So it'll look at all of those fields that are relevant to an expenditure. And then zero three is revenue accounts, and it'll look at these fields. Notice this has like a receipt. Oops, this has receipt instead of function. You know, in in the um, fewer fields. So when I was looking at the, what that user could see at the very beginning, and remember when I went to my account grid and I could only see the expenditure tab. Well, that's because the filter the user was restricted to only had the zero two. Um, they only had rows related to zero two in their account filter. So, okay, so um, first, so the first one was the cash. So if I put in zero zero, that basically what this is saying with the cash level is it's saying I'm giving access to this entire cash account. So um, that would be fund and special cost center. So like if I do this, then that's going to represent every single account expenditure and revenue in the cash in that uh, general fund. So that would give access to basically everything. Where you need to watch out for this, and I know this is why like this one especially is one that we've had like kind of as a FAQ, like we get this uh, question, this is something I commonly look for um, with account filter questions is, because this is designated for like um, giving access to a cash account, it's only looking at these boxes. If someone puts an OPU in here, it's not looking at this on this row. It's only looking at the two fields that are relevant to the TI. So if I wanted to give access to something with like OPU level, I would need to use rows with the O2 or the O3 or both. You know, so maybe I have both on there. So um, that is a tip to keep in mind. Uh, and that's why I wanted to, that's why I wanted to make sure we looked at this chart. Um, and um, this is why I have the documentation page open, because this was the one that I was like, I want to make sure that we look at this. So uh, in, so I'm in the wiki on our account filters page and in this more information section, transaction indicators we have this we have this included on this wiki page for easy reference so um that's something to keep in mind once you get used to it though then you know you know but i know that um getting started with setting these up that can be um something that you need to look out for okay and then you know what my I'm realizing my example is all expenditure accounts. So hmm, maybe we'll add. I think we can add, we can add revenue on. Well, I'll just add revenue on there so that we don't so that we don't have to change up our order. So uh the so the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to put like a couple more different um accounts in here, and. I'm going to go through and kind of fill this out and then we'll talk through. And um, actually, I'm remembering why I picked this one. So um, as I'm going through here and filling these out, uh, basically what I'm doing, so entering the fund, when I get to this object code, so the object I'm using wild cards and um, the wild card, it's a percentage. Um, so this would be like object this is going to be like any object that starts with one. So basically the 100s, right? Um, or any object that starts with two. So that's the 200s. 
the other thing that I can do here is I can um, do a range as well. And so in this case, it's going to be the first, the first matching um, like number and first code, I guess. Uh, and then two uh, dots, two periods, and then the last number. So that's going to let me do a range. And so basically that would end up being the same information, right? Because anything that starts with one and then my range, I've included anything that starts with one. So sometimes there are different ways to do things. It just kind of depends on, you know, what works best for them or like, you know, what you think of in the moment. <laughs> so, um, or I could do, or like, what's nice about this is I could do through 299 and then that would also cover this line too so I may not need to do like a separate row for this because that would be all the 100s and all the 200s if I do that full range but that gives you some flexibility because sometimes it's like you know it's not necessarily ones that are in a series um okay let me get a couple more lines filled out here And you'll notice, um, you can see I'm tabbing through here, which um, that can be really nice. I know we've gotten questions before on like, if it can like automatically advance after so many characters. And the reason it doesn't is because I can type in more characters to do things like those ranges. So I get the flexibility of, you know, it, it doesn't just limit, like if I want to do a range of special cost centers, I could, but I, I can't if my characters are limited. So <laughs> Um, so that's something that's come up before and, uh, I got two more rows to enter here and then, oh, you know what? And look at, I messed this one up. And I'm going to add one more for... Um, are 03. So I'm just going to give access to all the revenue accounts in the general fund as well, um, or in the 001. Okay, so now, um, if you're watching me do this, and you're like, okay, wait a second, though, you're putting in all these numbers, but like, what's this last column here? Like, this looks important, doesn't it? <laughs> and it is. So uh, this is, this designates the access over here. And we're going to go through and fill these out now. Um, but just to talk through these, so uh, if you hover, so I'm hovering right on that letter. And when I hover over it, C means create. So um, what these are going to designate is like what level of access to the account that's um, defined in this row. So like this one is expenditure accounts that have a function starting with 2.8. So this user, um, so if they're able to, they do have to have like base permissions to do some of these things. Like if they have access to create accounts, are they allowed to create accounts that start with 2.8? And if they can, then okay. This one, when I hover, it says read. And so that is like read only, which I'll tell you, this one is pretty much what, when especially for like account filters, like ones that you're going to use on reports and stuff, read only is the big one. Update, well, and I shouldn't, you know, and I say read only by like, I don't know, probably habit, but technically it's read because these can be, it can be combined with other checkboxes and then it's not, on, it's not read only. <laughs> but um, that's, you know, basically, can they see it? Can they get reports on it? You know, it is read. Okay. <laughs> and then U is update. So are they able to edit accounts that have that have this uh, that meet these parameters? D is delete. And then I'd say P is the other the other uh, pr pretty common one that we see on here. This is pre encumbrance, which a pre encumbrance is a requisition. So if you have a user that needs to put in requisitions with this account code, then they need to have it, it needs to be checked for 
um, this P access. <laughs> and then E is encumbrance. So can they use this if they were like directly creating a purchase order? And again, let me flip back here because I know I have these mapped out with your CRU, you know, just to make that a little bit easier to see. Once you get the ha the the um the hang of these things though, then it's like it comes pretty, you know, you, then you kind of you kind of know what you're looking for um with these and it's just I know it's kind of uh interesting that it's simplified here, but basically to keep space, you know, there's a lot of this in a small little area. Um, all right, so uh, the reason I haven't been checking any of these yet is because I want to use this apply access button. And the reason that I took the time to go through and enter this many different rows is because I want to show how this works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save us some clicking instead of clicking through all of these rows um, and say, okay, RP, you know, uh, whatnot. But um, what I can do is do select all over here on the left. And it's checking these first boxes. And then you know what, I'm gonna uncheck a couple. Um, so now all of my like later rows are selected, they're highlighted, awesome. And if I use this apply access button up here, it's gonna give me one pop-up window that has those same um, access options. Create, read, update, delete, uh, pre-encumbrance and encumbrance. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check read. I want them to be able to see that account. And then I also want this filter to be able to uh, put uh, sign requisitions to these accounts. And when I click OK, what that went and did is it updates all of these different rows for me. So, you know, if you're making an account filter that can get pretty complex, then uh, this is really nice. It'll save, you know, you don't have to be clicking through every single one of those rows to get all the R's checked, get all the P's checked um, and that kind of thing. So, um, but let's do, we, and then we can also like edit this later. Like, you know, these are our, this is our revenue row. So we don't need to have pre-encumbrance checked. Let's uncheck this one too, since that is like really big access. Um, and then, in addition to that, uh, we have these first two rows and you'll notice that I didn't include those, right? I'm also not going to check anything now. And any rows that don't have any of the boxes checked for access, that means they have no access. They're excluding those accounts. So what this filter is telling me is, so for my expenditure accounts, any expenditure accounts that have the fund 01 and have the object starting with one um, is not going to be included. Any expenditure account in the 01 starting with object, uh, object code starting with two, not going to be included. And then I sort of have this section where it's like, okay, so um, any functions, any accounts that have a function starting with two eight, or if it has this special cost center, or if it has this function, then they can post requisitions. They can see and post requisitions to accounts matching um, these parameters. And um, then these last two rows sort of define, okay, well, what else can they see? Like they can only use this subset for requisitions, but these last two, they could still see, they're gonna have this on their account grid um, to be able to view uh, or run reports on. All right. Okay, so then let's go up, scroll to the top. Let's get this saved up. Okay, before we click out of here, excuse me. Before we click out of here, notice that we do have an edit option. And we have a clone option too. So the clone option can be really handy um, if you need to, like if they're making filters, you know, say they are making it for multiple different buildings, each building might have a different OPU, but maybe they can build one and then clone that and then just slightly change some things around, you know, for what they would want, you know, the next user 
to to see um and basically they can change anything down here and then just make sure it's a different filter name so i added a two at the end there and then they'd be able to save that up and uh, pretty easily create different filters uh, if they have some that that aren't too different okay all right so now we're back to our grid and um, I promised earlier that I would um, give you another option you know with the we looked at the more option and show that this grid is kind of like filters and active now um there might be like a situation so you know say you want to clone one of these and uh you know you want to see like okay well what's on this filter what's on this filter you know you want uh the filter like we have say we had that grants filter i know i want i have a filter that i have set to the 590 fund and i want to clone that one and tweak it a little bit so if I use this advanced query, this gives me a pretty easy way to um, find, and, and and don't get me wrong, these filters can have a lot of variety because, you know, like we saw there was like wild cards and there's ranges that are possible and those can be used in any of the fields. But, you know, there are some consistencies like, you know, we've seen like, oh, the 001 fund and, and stuff like that. So, so if I want to come in here and say, uh, let me find any of the filters where the fund contains the 590. Um, I can put that in there. I can use equals in here too. I tested it with equals and um, contains, you know, my data again is test data. So like, it's kind of hard knowing, you know, knowing like all the things I have in here. Um, so you may like, if there are ones, if there are ones with like ranges and you're trying to see how it works for that, I think contains would probably be a closer hit. But you may need to try that, like, you know, depending on what you're actually looking for. But uh, here, so let me apply this. And let me, let me scroll down here. Let me hide. hide. Okay, so I think it's because I'm zoomed in so much. Let me just try zooming out real quick for this example. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let me just do this again just so you can see what it does. So see at the bottom here is my grid. And so this is my grid that shows all the different account filters that I have. So um, I just did fund contains 590. And when I click this apply query up in the top left, now it's looking. And so this one, it has a fund that's 590. So it knows and it can pull that up. Um, if I do, let's do 001 and now any of these, have a 001 fund. Um, so that may be an easy way to sort of find these. See this one, it's got a couple rows that are 001. Um, just, you know, instead of kind of like, like if there's something that they know, uh, I, again, I see that for like cloning. Like if I want to clone and I'm looking for a specific one and maybe I don't know what the name is, <laughs> that can help. So, um, okay. So that's the basics on account filters, like as far as creating one. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, using them a little bit more. Uh, but do we have any questions on that create process? Uh, definitely let me know in the chat or if you want to chime in um, at any point, uh, please feel free. Okay, you know what, let's go. Um, I, I wanna show, we're gonna, next we're gonna talk about assigning filters to users, but let's just go um, for good measure, run our budget summary. And you know, we had this with the, we, we added some revenue accounts too, which um, I'm just running the budget summary. So this is only gonna show us our, our expenditure <laughs> side that we filtered this to. Um, open this up. And so, you know, one thing we're going to see, so this was our 001, and then um, here, let me 
zoom in a little bit here. If you remember, our very first two rows on this excluded the 100 and 200 object codes. So you can see right away, look at these accounts. They are starting with the 400s. And if we were to scroll through here, we got 500. Um, we're not going to see any accounts that have those object codes in the 100s or 200s, which that's something that they might you know, want to do. Uh, that's one we've seen pretty regularly because those are like the salary and benefit accounts. So um, they might, you know, the people that are actually entering requisitions, like they don't need to see those salary accounts in any fund. Um, and then I'm this is kind of long, so I'm going to stop scrolling through it here and save all our eyes. But just to give an example, uh, that's an easy way to just go double check that filter that um, that I just made. All right, and then let me go, we'll go back to here. Maybe kind of have this to guide us. So next we're gonna talk about um, assigning those account filters to a user. So our very first example, uh, I logged in as the user and showed you how you know they could see things and, and what they could see was just restricted to certain account codes. But uh, how does that happen? So uh, the first thing is like what access is required in order to assign account filters to a user. The first one, if you have like sysman user access, admin access, you know, this is going to give you access to the user page and it's going to give you full access to edit anything with the users um, at the ITCs. I'm sure you're familiar with this. this is how you give them their roles um, and set up the user information. There is an option as well for limited user update access. And this is um, automatically granted for use as manager uh, role. And then there's a there's a use as user profile role um, that is also available to be given to other users uh, if desired. And basically um, with this like limited user update access, it's going to give access so that um, like the use as managers or that special role can edit some of the things on the user page, but not like not the roles, not the assigned roles, not like the access levels, uh, but things like filters they can so that they can maintain this themselves at the district. And uh, usually the use as manager would be reserved for like the treasurer, maybe the assistant treasurer, just definitely depends on the district, but um, but that way they would be able to have some control when they're creating account filters and then assign and then I'm um, going through and assigning these. So let's see what that looks like. So for this, I have a manager. All right, so um, I'm going to the system users. And oh, this user that I'm logged in at, a manager, this has USAS manager permission. So that that's what we're looking at um, in this account. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry about all these pop-ups. All right, so um, let me look at my Amanda account because that's the one I was looking at before. So um, I could like look at, or I can edit here. Let's do edit. And so you'll see, like, I have access to just some of these fields. I can maintain, like, the standard stuff, their name, their title, their email. I can't change the role. So this user is rec only. I can't change that. I need to contact my ITC uh, and probably submit some kind of uh, <laughs> approval form, um, <laughs> make sure that that's all tracked properly so that the role can be updated. But the filters is right here. And again, here's where we see a drop down to to pick from. So uh, I have like my different filters we were seeing on the grid. Here's my my test here. Let's go ahead. Let's just, let's change this. So I'm going to switch it to this account now. Um, this is a good time to note, I think, that when we're looking at this, notice I can assign one filter per user, okay? So I can, I'm picking, I'm saying, okay, this user, this is their filter. Anything contained in that filter is what they're going to be restricted to. Um, however, I can assign 
the same filter to multiple users. So um, to give like an example of that is consider, you know, we were talking about like maybe they would make a role for like a high school secretary um, that's going to be putting in requisitions. Well, what if there are three different people that hold that position and responsibility? They have three different secretaries at the high school. They all contribute and um, they, you know, kind of whoever has the time is going to be putting in those requisitions when they get them. So all three of those secretaries should have the same accounts that they're available to access. So what I could do in that case is I could um, I could make like the high school account filter and then I could assign that high school account filter to all three of those people. Uh, so that kind of cuts down on the need to build different account filters. Um, and then I have a message in the chat from Rhonda. There is a Jira issue uh, for like requesting to assign multiple filters to a user. And I, yes, there is. I believe we have a feedback issue for that. Um, with a, a couple requests on it. I do remember that one. So, uh, so yes. So uh, once we assign that here, yes, you're welcome. Yeah, I know we got that one out there. Uh, we have a couple other things in here, um, but we're not going to go too deep into that. We're just going to give our filter and let's save this up. And so that's what I could see as, as a USAS manager. I'm going to go back into the admin account though. And you know what? We are going to change this. We're going to pretend that they submitted a form for us to change their role. <laughs> uh, no, we're, we're going to change their role because I want to give them access to, uh, to the reports so that we can, um, so that we can run like a budget summary. Let's give them... Let's give them read only too. I think that should do it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna log in. Is this Amanda user again? And now, so we changed their filters. So this is going to look a little bit different than it did last time we were in here. We changed their filter. We changed their role. So we did kind of, we did kind of switch a lot here. All right. So let's go to our expenditure grid. Oh my gosh, not now. And um, again, so this was the filter we just created. Again, you'll notice that in these object codes, um, oh, look at that. Hmm, let's see, what is this? Oh, this is where I have to troubleshoot. Well, oh, because the 001, because we only said they can't have the, um, our exclude lines were specific to the 001 account. Those were different account codes. So uh yes, okay, so in the in the 001. See, and this is why, okay, so this is a good time to point out. <laughs> um running the report, so like if you're setting up an, an account filter, there are some times where like you need to tweak things as you go, you kind of like get it set up and then you know double check like what it's seeing. The um using the filters on the reports, you know, that's why I keep going to that because that can be really helpful to review and make sure what it's showing. It also can be helpful. And, you know, this is kind of totally up to you, like what, what works for like your ITC. But I do think being able to assign the filter to a user and then like log in. So I don't know if that means like a test user uh, in like, like a test user in a live instance, and then, you know, disable it afterwards. Like that depends on how comfortable you are with having something available like that or maybe pulling like a backup test instance and then testing it on users there. But um, it can be very helpful to do like exactly what I'm doing here is give a user, you know, log in as a user that's got that account code. I'm sorry, the account filter assigned to them to, to test it out. 
So um, when I've built account filters in the past or like helped you all with them um, through questions, that's like one of my go-to things is, you know, edit it, check it, and uh, that can be really good. So, okay. So anyway, so my fund zero one, and then when I do this, the zero zero one, I had excluded the 100s and 200s. So we're not seeing them there. I did give access to the revenue um, to the, I had that 03 line at the end for the 001. So that is um, showing here. And then let's see. So, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to show is in requisitions. I, and I wanted to show this the first time and then I kind of forgot, but uh, we can do it now is when I go to create a requisition. So remember my um, access, I had the P for pre-encumbrance pre and I said that means requisitions. And when I'm actually creating um, a requisition here, these charges, these um, that I'm going to have available to me, um, those are related to um, to what I was given access to on my account filter. So if I go through here, hmm, um, this should pull up like just what I have the ability, uh, maybe to see. And then, so usually, so I did kind of something weird with this account filter because I wanted to show you the different things is like this user has access to see a whole lot more than they have access to use. So let's do this. Hang on. I just want to make sure that this is a little bit easier to see what this is actually doing. And my current filter has a whole lot of codes on there. So we're going to fix that. Let me go back to this user. Let's give them the grants one that we were looking at at first, because I just think that one's just a bit easier to see. So easy as that, uh, they are updated. Oh my goodness. Keep trying to say never, but I think my problem is that I'm logging into so many people. All right. So now let's create this requisition. And you know what? I'm just going to skip right down here. And so now that I have this more simple um, account filter on here that's got me set to uh, just these four accounts, you can see when I go to choose my charges, I only have those specific accounts matching the filter. And as soon as I start typing anything in here, it's just going to show me, you know, any ones that are matching, but it's only limited to showing me the ones that, that meet my filter. So, and this to say like, they're, you know, obviously from trying to look at our different examples, there are like a lot of different ways to use these account codes or I'm sorry, <laughs> account filters, because some could be really broad, like what we were looking at with, the, that, with that last one. Um, or in, in cases like this, they could be very specific so that the user ju just has that handful of account codes that they're going to be using you know, on their requisition. And it really kind of just depends on the intent and purpose of each account filter as far as you know how specific it's going to be. Um, so, okay, so let's go ahead and then I could choose any one of these and use it on this requisition, but we're not gonna follow through with all that now. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's go back, we're going back to the admin account. I think this will be our last switch around. Um, I know we are about at 10 a.m. I'm gonna go for just a couple more minutes, but we're almost done. Okay, so speaking of like how um, like broad or specific these account filters could be, 
The other thing I wanted to show, so, you know, we kind of looked at that. Our Amanda test was like kind of in the middle. We ran the budget summary with that. Uh, I do also have another filter in here for supplies. So I know this is one that comes up a lot uh, for like running like a, an account activity, like a budget account activity. And sometimes they need to go back and like run for the year to show like certain funds and um, with this like a uh, specific subset of um, object codes. So what this, this is like a very simple filter, but it's just for expenditure accounts, just for objects starting with five. And then I have the R access. So that's the read access. So this can be used for uh, reports. And if I go to a report like our budget summary, now let me choose, so I'm gonna choose, uh, and here's where I'm gonna start typing this in, our supplies. Now that's going to filter this so that this will only show objects that start with five, this is only the 500 object codes by entering this filter. However, I can also enter, like say I enter a fund in here and I'm picking a random fund. I could probably pick the general fund, but we're gonna try this and see what's in here um, in hopes that it's a little bit smaller <laughs> than our 001. Um, nope. All right, fine, we'll do the, we'll do the 001. Um, all right, so now we see, look at all of these are the 500 object codes and it's only for the general fund. So if I scroll down here, it's only for the general fund. So this can be kind of a nice way to be able to like filter the report because I could run it for this and then I could change that and I could run it for a different fund. And then this filter supplies is gonna work in combination with any other parameters that I'm entering. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, so uh, one question that we get pretty commonly is about like doing uh, some of these filters with wild cards and with ranges. And anytime we get a question about that, um, really for any more complex filtering, these account filters are the way to go. Now, don't get me wrong. We definitely have some feedback issues to improve the filters on those reports. And certainly if you get requests for that, let us know. But what you can do to help your districts right now um, to be able to get that more complex filtering immediately is by using these account filters. And so um, when we come in here and make these, uh, if you do have users that were familiar with Classic, the other way to think about this grid is, is kind of similar to like those parameters pages. You know, they have these different rows where they can put in multiple filters for an account. So um, if they have, you know, certain like fun funds, functions, um, et cetera, that they want to use for a report, they could build this filter and then take it over and use it there. Um, I know that depending on what they're getting that report for, like it, it's not always like the most convenient to be like, okay, I need to be, build a whole filter for this. But the perk of this is that when they do build this account filter, um, if it is something that they report on, uh, first of all, it's gonna stay there, right? Unless they delete it, then they have that account filter. So it might be something that they don't run very often, but if they run it once a year, if they build the filter this year, the next year, they might need to edit it for like special cost centers and such but it'll still be there to reference back to and then use again instead of having to like completely re-enter um, report parameters. The other thing that's nice is these account filters can be used multiple places. So we've been looking at our budget summary report this whole time, but I also have the account activity report and uh, this also has a filter on it. So if there's something that I'm specifically like getting this group, I need to run this report on it. I run this budget summary and then I find, you know, okay, so I, I know I'm looking at, you know, the expenditures in this group, but I can only see the totals on the budget summary. So I want to take that over and now look at those same accounts, but look at the transaction detail 
boom, I don't have to re-enter uh, like detailed parameters. I can just pick the same filter and then run this to balance out and see the transactions that are making up those totals. So there are benefits to it. And um, I do think that they can be really helpful on these reports as well. So, okay. Um, and then, yeah, so that is, um, that's about all I have. The last like little note that I have just with discussing account filters is, you know, I mean, you can see it on this page. There's no limit to the number of account filters that they can make. And so, you know, um, thinking about the different ways that these can be utilized for um, like grants, buildings, departments, you know, I think these can be really uh, useful and, um, you know, they take some practice getting used to kind of like the ordering and how that impacts stuff. But once you get the hang of it, these are uh, just such a great tool in, in USAS. All righty. Well, that's all I have on account filters for today. Uh, please let me know in the chat if you have any questions before we wrap up. Um, but if not, thank you all so much for attending today. And I hope everyone has a great weekend.